A short while ago, I did a review of the Nogwell electronic composter. And one of the things I learned in doing that review is that these aren't really composters. What they do is take your kitchen scraps and they dehydrate them. Now they do mix them up a little bit. They claim it's grinding. It really isn't ground up very fine. They don't compost because all of this happens in three to four hours and that's far too short for any composting to take place. So what they produce is hydrated kitchen scraps. What are you supposed to do with that? Well, they recommend that you add it to your plants. And one way of using it is for your indoor plants. So add it in with your potting media or laid on top of the potting media as a mulch. And I just wonder, is that really good for plants? After all, this hasn't started to decompose. It's kind of like taking raw sewage that's been dried and putting it on your plants. Does it do any harm? And that's the question I'd like to answer in this video. So what I'm going to do in this video is to do a test to see if it will harm my plants. Now let's have a quick look at the machine and the material that's produced. You put your kitchen scraps in the machine and it hydrates them. It draws off all the water. You're left with material like this. I've been running this machine for a couple weeks and now I have a whole pail of this material. And I've mixed up really well so it's not just one batch, it's several batches mixed together. And this is what I'm going to test. So in this video I'm going to show you how I prepare the samples for testing. I'll show you how I prepare the seeds and how I plant the seeds in the material. And then I'll show you the results. For this test, it's important to run a control. Now a control is a situation that you understand. And in this case, I'm going to use straight ProMix as my control. This is what I've been using to grow seedlings in for many years. I know how it works. I know my plants grow well in it. So I'm going to use this as my control. So the first thing I do is I want a pot of the media that I'm going to use as my control. So just fill it up. Now this is pretty fluffy, so I usually put in a little extra, pack it down a little bit, and that's ready for seeds. Now I also need something to test against this control. And in this case, I'm going to try testing this material here. Now the manufacturer of the machines recommends that you mix about 20% of this in with your soil. But I'm going to try a slightly different experiment. I'm going to try different amounts of this and see at what level is it safe for your plants. So I'm going to make up a batch that's 100% this. I'm going to make up another batch that's 75% this, 50% this, 25%, and 0%. And the 0% is my control. So now I just have to go and make up these batches. I pre-measured this and I know that if I take two of these pots, which are a little smaller than the white ones, that will fill a white one. So if I want a 50% mix, it's one pot of this and one pot of this. I'm going to mix it up really well. And then fill my pot with it. I'll also press it down like I did before. I want these two pots to be as similar as possible. So that's my 50% and then I'll label it so I can remember what it is. Now I'll make up the other pots. So I want 100%, 75% and 25% and the 0% is my original control pot. You should be able to see the white roots coming out of these seeds. So I just find one and I'll just lay it on top of the media here. That's one, two, three, four, five. I think six will work just right in here. Now what I'll do is I'll just take a very small amount of ProMix and put it on top. So 
So I know this pot has six seeds in it, and I'll do the same for these other pots. I'll then take the pots and put it in a Tupperware dish like this, without the Pro Mix in it, and I'll water them from below. Once the pots are good and wet, I'll cover it up and leave it until I start seeing the green growth. And that will only take a couple days. Then I'll open it up, get the plants under lights, and let them grow. It's been about 10 days and it's time for an update. Let's see what those seedlings are doing. This has been a really interesting experiment and quite honestly, a complete failure. So after planting the seeds, I went and watered each of the pots and left them overnight. The next day, the whole thing smelled like crazy. It smelled like someone had died in here. The other thing I noticed is that the soil started coming out of the pots. What happened was that that dehydrated kitchen waste absorbed the water and started expanding. This is the pot with 100% kitchen waste and it was way up to here. I thought it was going to overflow. And you could tell how much kitchen waste was in each pot by the amount of growth I got out of it. This has zero. You can see that the soil when I started was below the lip. I kept them watered for three to four days, but they stunk so bad that I finally let them dry out. A lot of the water that ran through the pots went in the bottom here and the whole thing just got full of mold. So now they're pretty dry and so they've shrunk back down into their pots. Well, what about seedling growth? Well, this is the pot with just potting mix and I do have three seedlings growing here but they haven't done very much. And I suspect that the reason is that there was too much CO2 gas in here. This smell indicates an anaerobic reaction and that's gonna create a lot of CO2. And I think it just flooded the chamber and these guys haven't really grown very well. Now, one of these other pots had a couple seedlings for a day or two and then they died. These pots here with more compost, they never sprouted at all. It wasn't a total failure because I did see that the seedlings in my regular pot grew better than with the compost, but it is a failure from the point of view that the seedlings in my standard mix didn't grow as well as I expect. And that's why you do this control. You wanna control in here so you know that things are going normally. I can't actually say that these have grown normally. The seedlings are stunted. They are alive, but they're not doing well. If the control doesn't grow well, then I'm not entirely sure how this affected the seedlings. So I'm going to redo this experiment. I'm going to use the same pots and the same material. And what I'm going to do is take a lot of this stuff out. There's too much of it. Now you can see it, it, it's completely rotten in here. Everything is moldy, it's rotting. I'm going to do the same with these other three pots. The soil down here is still quite wet and that's what's causing all of this rotting to take place. Now I'm going to pull these seedlings out and I've prepared some other seeds for testing. So this time they're going to be larger seeds and I like using peas. So I've soaked them for 48 hours and now I'm going to put six peas into every pot and then we'll continue the experiment and see what happens. Three, four, five, six. All right, I'll do the same with the other pots and grow them on. And I'll bring you back in a few days and show you what happened. This pot here on your left is 100% Pro Mix. So this is my standard seed starting mix. This is my control. This pot here has 75% of this soil and 25% of the material produced by the electronic compost. This pot here is 50-50. This is 75% of the material out of the composter and this is 100%. You can clearly see a change in growth here. Remember, each pot received six seeds at the same time and they've all been grown in the same spot. The only variation here is the soil in the pot. Now, the first thing I do to evaluate these results is I look at the number of seeds that have actually sprouted. Now, I put six seeds in 
And I'd like to see six sprout, but that doesn't always happen. There's always a seed or two that just doesn't make it. This pot here has five sprouts. This one has four that you can see, and there's another very small one that's just coming up now. So it'll be five. This one actually has six, which is actually the best germination. This has one very tiny one, and this has zero. Now the difference between five and six, I don't worry about. I'm looking at larger differences. Like there's a big difference here. This is five and this is one. That could be significant. But five or six, that's not significant. Because as I said, there's always one or two that doesn't germinate. I consider all of these good germination, this poor germination. Then I look at the actual growth, and you can see a big difference. This is the normal growth. This growth here is not as good. This is not as good as this one, and this growth is quite terrible. So what can we conclude from this? Well, even at 25%, the material from the electronic composter is affecting the growth of seedlings. It's slowing down their growth. Now remember, this material is advertised as being good compost and as fertilizer. Now I know if I put fertilizer in a pot, I'm going to get better growth, not worse growth. Unless, of course, I'm adding too much fertilizer, and then I generally kill my plant. So looking at this, I do not consider this plant to be fertilized better than this one. All right, let's summarize this. First of all, this seedling test is a good way to test soil or any other additions that you want to make to that soil. What does this seedling test tell us about the material that's produced in the electronic composters? The best description for that material is dehydrated kitchen scraps. It's not compost, and it's not fertilizer. Companies that use those two terms are misleading the general public. Electric composters produce dehydrated kitchen scraps. Now, I wouldn't use that in a house plant. I wouldn't put it in the soil, and I wouldn't layer it on top as a kind of mulch. One reason is that once the stuff absorbs some water, it starts to smell, and I wouldn't want that in the house. But the main reason is that it's not adding anything to that plant. My fear is that gardeners use that because they've been told it's fertilizer, and now they stop fertilizing their house plants. But this material is going to take many months to decompose before it adds any nutrients to your plants. In the meantime, your plants are going to be starving. Don't put it on your house plants. Now, I think the product is great for storing over the winter when you don't want to go outside your compost pile. Once dry, the material is quite stable and you can keep it in containers for probably years. But once spring comes, take it outside. And this is fine to be spread around your garden or put into a compost pile. In both places, it will slowly decompose and it will slowly improve the soil in your garden. If you're interested in composting, I am working on a book called Composting Science for Gardeners. I expect it to be out in late 2022. Have fun in the garden.